It's late September, which means cooling temperatures, shorter days, crunchy apples, and of course, new iPhones. The new iPhone 6S and larger 6S Plus look nearly the same as last year's monster hits, but Apple has made a number of significant internal changes and some subtle external ones to improve nearly every aspect of the phones. First, what hasn't changed? The iPhone 6S still has a 720p display and the iPhone 6S Plus a 1080p panel, lower than the industry average, but that's only apparent when held up next to Android competitors like the Galaxy S6 and LG G4. Apple's IPS displays are still excellent, with perfect viewing angles, deep blacks, and industry-leading low reflectiveness, but there's no question the Android Pixel Density Arms Race has left Apple behind. The iPhones look perfectly sharp, especially the denser iPhone 6S Plus, and I'd rather take a bright retina panel I can see in direct sunlight over a dim, oversaturated one with double the pixels. It's underneath the display where things start to get interesting. Apple has brought its 3D touch technology, known as Force Touch on the Apple Watch and MacBook, to the iPhone, giving the display pressure sensitivity. Right now it's used mainly to activate shortcuts within Apple's own apps, but we've heard that Dropbox and Instagram, among others, are readying updates for launch. On the software side, the pressure sensitivity turns into two gestures, peak and pop, which can be used inside supported apps to peek into a piece of content like a web link or physical address, and then dive into the actual app or Safari with a slightly harder press. Apple has also replaced the traditional vibration engine in older iPhones with a newer, more precise taptic engine, a larger version of the one found in the Apple Watch, and the difference is amazing. Whenever you peek or pop into a new window, the Taptic engine springs to life with a little buzz. It's a great experience, especially since it applies to every vibration on the phone, from phone calls and text messages to in-app notifications. 3D Touch is eventually going to be a really big deal, but for now, like Siri and Touch ID were when they were announced, it's mostly a cool technology demo. But even the things you can do with it today, previewing content, swiping between apps without the home button, and quickly scrolling between words, completely changes the way I use my phone. The addition of 3D Touch is the main reason why the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are slightly taller and thicker and a little heavier than their predecessors. The first time an iPhone has ever gone this way. The differences are negligible, but Apple's stronger glass and more hardy 7000 series aluminum is not. I'll admit to dropping the iPhone a couple of times, and the device, which I think would have been dented or smashed in previous years, escaped without a scratch. The screen may not be covered with sapphire, but whatever magic Apple is including with its dual ion exchange process works wonders. The iPhone 6S may look identical to its predecessor, but that's okay. This is still one of the most functionally beautiful phones on the market in my opinion. This year Apple is releasing the device in a new rose gold color, in addition to the space grey, silver and gold variants from last year. It's more pink than gold to be honest, but I quickly fell for its unique hue, one that is surely to be imitated. This year those screens are powered by a new A9 chip and 2 gigs of RAM, the first increase in memory since the iPhone 5 back in 2012. The A9 chip itself is still a dual-core 64-bit part, but clock speed has been increased to 1.9 GHz, and it benchmarks put it somewhere between 70 and 80% faster than the A8. What it comes down to is this, the 6S's A9 chip can do more with two cores than most Android phones can do with eight. Single-core compute is nearly twice as powerful as the Cortex A57 chips inside the Exynos 7420 of the Galaxy S6. As for RAM, the extra gigabyte means faster loading speeds and less reloading of apps and browser tabs when resuming from sleep, something that is especially apparent on the iPhone 6S Plus, whose predecessor was thirsting for extra memory to go along with its 1080p display. All this power pushes the pixels in iOS 9, Apple's newest mobile OS. While most of the big changes were kept for the iPads with multitasking and an improved keyboard experience, the iPhone got many of the core improvements too. Siri is now faster and can respond to more requests, and the, left host mo the leftmost home screen panel is now a dedicated Siri search bar, answering written questions and offering frequent contacts and apps, nearby food options and breaking news stories. Some of iOS 9's biggest changes are in the foundations though. There's a new system font, San Francisco, which aligns with OS X and the Apple Watch, and battery management has been improved, boosting battery life on most older devices. The new multitasking menu is pretty, and with 3D Touch, accessing it is now easier than ever. And by the way, Notification Center now sorts notifications chronologically and not by app, making it way easier to clear all of your notifications at once, one of my favorite updates to the OS. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus have 12 megapixel rear camera sensors that can shoot 4K video, the biggest update to iPhone photography in 5 years. The new sensors are excellent, and they cement the iPhone's position as one of the most capable portable cameras on the market. The camera app loads faster than before, and the shutter speed 
is always consistent even in low light. Physically, the iPhone 6s has a sensor the same size as before but with more pixels packed closer together, but Apple claims there is less crosstalk between them resulting in lower noise. The good news is that even with smaller pixels, the new phone's low light performance hasn't declined at all. The bad news is that it hasn't improved much either. Daylight photos look natural and, as always, very good. It has much more detail. And 12 megapixels seems to be a decent compromise between the 8 of iPhone's past and the 16 to 23 of this year's high-end Android crop. The iPhone 6s Plus has some additional improvements. It's still the only version to have optical image stabilization, and Apple has enabled the feature for video capture as well as stills. That OIS allows the shutter to stay open longer in low-light situations without blur, but it still doesn't really help with moving subjects. Apple's other big camera upgrade this year is mostly a software one. Live Photos, a feature that is enabled by default on the new phones, captures a few seconds of video and the accompanying audio before and after you press the shutter button. And while Nokia and HTC have similar products, they're not integrated into the very stills you capture with the main camera app, nor are they reachable via the ecosystem of social networks and apps that are iMessage, Instagram, and Facebook. Live photos hit me right in the feels. Being able to see the before and after of one of my young cousin's laughing fits without having to alter or change my photo taking habits in any way is what make, makes live photos so affecting and effective. As someone who takes thousands of photos a year, I can see live photos as the single biggest reason to buy an update to buy an, an iPhone this year. The 6S has a few more improvements too. It supports Category 6 LTE for 300 megabit download speeds, as well as voiceover LTE and Wi-Fi calling. The Touch ID sensor is now twice as fast as well. I sometimes don't even see the lock screen because it is so fast. The integrated M9 chip allows me to say, hey Sirian, even when my phone isn't plugged in. Battery life is still an issue with the smaller 6S. Apple promises around 10 hours of video playback on the, on the smaller phone, which is the same as the iPhone 6, and occasionally I had to recharge the phone in the evening to keep it going. The physical size of 3D Touch forced Apple to make the battery slightly smaller this year. The 6S Plus though is in better shape, lasting around a day to a day and a half with moderate use. Overall, the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are two of the best smartphones on the market, and to me are worth their price. That won't be true of everyone, especially Canadians balking at the $399 subsidized cost for the 16GB version, a number that Apple insists people still want. One piece of advice, and take it from someone who's filled up many a smartphone, Spend the extra money and buy the 64GB iPhone 6S or 6S Plus. In two years, when you have thousands of photos and dozens of apps and still have space left over, you'll thank me.